These are my spoiler-free impressions of the show through the first two episodes. Why are zombies so popular? I never had an answer to that until I watched ZOM 100, Bucket List of the Dead. If you look at an individual zombie, it's much less interesting than a vampire or a werewolf, at least in my opinion. But now, I think I get it. It's not about the individual zombie. It's about how your life changes as a result of all those zombies taking down society at once. You get to ask yourself how you might rise to the challenge in that situation. The edge that zombies have over other monsters is that they destroy all of civilization, whereas a vampire might go after one individual at a time. Zom 100's fresh perspective made me realize one of the secret advantages of the zombie apocalypse. I'm sure civilization basically ends, but that also means that we are freed from the duties that that civilization ties us down with. The show is such a huge hit right now because anyone with responsibilities can relate to it. Even if you're not a salary worker in Japan, maybe you've still got a stressful job with a deadline coming up. Or maybe you're a college student with tests and teachers and pressures from grades, but as soon as you see the first zombie munching on someone's arm, that's it, you're done. All that goes away. There are no deadlines, bosses, teachers, bills, no responsibilities other than survival. Psalm 100 reminds us that the complete collapse of society also means the complete removal of the stresses and obligations of that society. It's just like getting up from your job one day and going camping at the mall, except you get to kill stuff with shotguns and chainsaws. Akira Tendo takes this even further and uses the zombie apocalypse as the kick in the pants that he needed to do the things he always wanted to do, like ask out his crush or lounge around and drink beer all day. He writes down his own bucket list of things he wants to do before the zombies kill him off, and it's like the zombie apocalypse is the best self-help seminar he ever could have gotten. Akira Tendo is a low-level worker for a pretty terrible production company that seems like they make commercials. I think that's what he said. I don't mean that they produce terrible commercials. I mean that the company is terribly hard on its workers. In Japan, they call this type of company a black company, and some of them have been known to literally work their employees to death. Those multiple all-nighters that Akira starts out his job with are not exaggerations. Every so often there's a story in the Japanese media about a worker who died from exhaustion because they'd been working non-stop without adequate sleep. There are labor laws against this now, but not every company follows the rules, and it can be tough to go against decades of corporate tradition, especially if you've got very little status at the company. When I first loaded up the episode and saw it was TVMA, I figured that must be for the zombie gore, but it got surprisingly dark even before that. Honestly, the darkest parts of the show were probably the depiction of the black company. On top of the amount of overwork, you had an unhealthy corporate culture that used competition between workers to force them into self-destructive behaviors for the company's benefit, like living out of vending machines and sustaining themselves with energy drinks and caffeine pills. Beyond that, the female workers were sexually exploited by upper management, and Akira even thinks about throwing himself in front of a subway train so he doesn't have to go to work the next day. The zombie violence was downright wholesome after that. I did think they overdid the comparison that corporate salary workers are just like actual zombies in real life. The first time they showed Akira shambling back and forth like a zombie, I thought, okay, yeah, I get it. Corporate wage slaves are the real zombies. But the third or fourth time they used that same gimmick, it felt pretty played out. You could argue that it was necessary to show just how badly Akira needed an escape from his routine. This kind of points out one of the only main issues that I have with the show so far. It gets pretty heavy-handed with the symbolism. There's a lot of tell, don't show going on in places, and it made me think that maybe the people who made the anime didn't quite trust their audience. The biggest example I can think of is when we get the first zombie shots, and Akira's world goes from grayscale to having patches of color to finally filling out everything with these gorgeous full-color visuals. I thought it was pretty cool that the zombie blood still maintained those bright colors to show just how much of a welcome intervention this crisis was into Akira's life, so that even the blood and gore had this cheerful sheen to it. So I thought, yeah, that's a cool visual. His life was dull and monotonous, but now the zombie apocalypse has brought him some much needed color and freedom. And as soon as I finished that thought, Akira starts monologuing about the symbolism of gray versus color and how his life now has much more variety. It's almost like he's staring right at the viewer saying, do you get it? And they kind of lost me at that point. Hopefully they can be a little more subtle with the rest of the series. The second episode is there mainly to introduce Shizuka, and so far, she's my favorite character. If you take a smoking hot girl, put her in workout clothes, and make her act a bit cool and distant, that's like waifu catnip for a lot of weebs. Shizuka approaches the zombie apocalypse from a totally different mindset than Akira. She's all about using logic and personal discipline to increase her odds of survival. However, we also get a few hints that she's not just a stick in the mud, like when her gaze lingers for just a bit on a cherry-flavored mochi after she's reminded herself to avoid sugar. That's my kind of girl. We're probably gonna have a pretty small cast overall, 
just going by who shows up in the OP. It seems like we've got two more main characters to introduce in the next few episodes, and I gotta say, I'm not quite convinced about those two, just from their character designs. They could be fun, or they could be just goofy and annoying, so that could be a red flag, but the writing's been pretty good so far, so I'm optimistic about the new arrivals. Production values are a big selling point. A TV series has no right to look this good, but it does. Psalm 100 uses movie quality animation and art direction, and it's a treat to look at. I do tend to get Deku from Hero Aka vibes from Akira, maybe that's just me. So maybe the designs aren't necessarily breaking new ground, but you can tell that the show was drawn and animated by people who actually cared about the finished product, which I appreciate. When it comes to sound design, honestly, I didn't notice it a whole lot. And that's usually a good thing, but it also means that nothing really stood out. The music gets fast paced and exciting when it needs to, and the soundtrack and effects were a good match for the tone of the series. Maybe the OP or ED will grow on me the more that I hear them, but for now, everything's fine. Psalm 100 feels like the next step in anime responding to overworked salary workers. Instead of taking the worker out of the office though, it just destroys the need to work at all. I think the show sums itself up with the Latin motto, Memento Mori, that gets repeated in episodes one and two. It means, remember that you're going to die and use that knowledge to make every moment of your life count. And if you're an anime fan who wants to live life to the fullest, then I recommend checking the show out because it looks like it's gonna be a good one. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.